Good morning. It is December 1st. That means I get to wear the Christmas uniform. It's large and Christmassy, but I gotta figure out how to. Yes, honey, I have to go to work. I'm doing my video. Go upstairs and wait for me, okay? Okay. Yes, I have to work today. This is my uniform for Christmas. Do you like it? It's a little big. I got to figure that out. My hair's a mess. I get it. It's December 1st, okay? And we're going to start with a daily reflection on the New Testament. Despise not prophesying, prove all things, hold fast that which is good. 1 Thessalonians 5, 20, 21. Please shut the door. The gift of prophecy is abundantly found in the Lord's church. As members of his church, we are to embrace the spirit of prophecy, deny not the spirit of revelation, nor the spirit of prophecy, for woe unto him that denieth these things. Likewise, revelation is the bedrock foundation of the restored gospel. By revelation, we know that Jesus is the Christ. By revelation, we know the truth of all things, and we are able to discern light and darkness and gain wisdom. In the spirit of revelation, we are to examine or put to the test all things. We are to study and humbly approach the Lord in prayer to find the answers to our questions. Clearly, I need to pray about how to pray better. That's, that's, that's what I got from that one. I have an issue. Clearly, I need to pray about it. I... Uh, I... What am I trying to say? I don't know, but I need to pray more, apparently. That's, instead of me trying to watch YouTube videos from Christian girls or uh, so on and so forth, I just need to pray. That is clearly the answer. Okay, today is 1 John chapter 5, and... In this, uh, he says, saints are born of God through belief in Christ. Water, blood, and the spirit testify of Christ. Belief in Christ is required in order to gain eternal life. Um, the verse I chose for my personal statement, we'll get to that one in a bit. But, um, the, uh, verse 9 made me think of something. Verse 9, if we receive the witness of men... The witness of God is greater. For this is the witness of God, which he hath testified of his son. It just reminded me of a conversation I once had with my Baptist friend, Gavin. Um, and we were talking about, I, th I think it was the Nicene Creed, or Creed or something, I don't know. Nicene Creed, where they decided that, they decided on the Trinity, a group of religious leaders got together and they decided that Father, Son, and Holy Ghost were one person. And I was talking to him about that and I'm like, but why wouldn't you ask God if that was true? And he's like, because these men already decided and they were heavily in the word, so they're to be trusted. I'm like, but why not just ask God? Isn't his witness greater? Well, these men were, I don't need to because these men already did. Who would you trust? God or a group of men? I know who I would trust. Anyways, but the verse I picked was verse 5. Who is he that overcometh the world, but he that believeth that Jesus is the Son of God? And I wrote, he who believes in the Son of God overcomes the world. So if I believe in Christ, I can overcome. If I believe he is my savior, my redeemer, my friend, my brother, I will be not saved. <laughs> Clearly, I've been watching too many Christian videos if that's the vernacular I want to use. But um, I can overcome the world. Okay, let's get into our verse by verse. See, my hair is giving me all kinds of, oh, so bad today, so bad. All right, verse three, love of God and obedience or good works cannot be separated. His commandments are not grievous for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. 
Verse 5, salvation is only in and through Christ. One cannot merit anything in or of it oneself. Verse 7, the King James Version has added words in this verse not found in any Greek manuscript nor in any translation prior to the 16th century. Thus, the phrase bear record in heaven, the Father, the Word, and the Holy Ghost, and these three are one, and there are three that bear witness in earth are a late addition. The members of the Godhead are one in purpose, not in physicality or entity. Verse 8, spirit, water, and blood are three elements of mortal and spiritual birth and key elements of the atonement, which brings renewed life to every creature. Verses 9 through 21, these verses indicate that John wrote to those who were possessors of eternal life through faith in in Christ. Though they yet lived in mortality, John testified that church members who have an abiding testimony of Christ with all that entails and implies possess eternal life as a present possession, even though the full blessings and conditions of eternity lie in the future. That's an interesting concept. Verse 17, this passage leaves little room for rationalization. All unrighteousness is sin. Verse 18, spiritual rebirth causes one to lose the desire for sin. He continueth not in sin, as the Joseph Smith translation says. That is the powerful message of Mosiah 5.2. The spirit of the Lord omnipotent has wrought a mighty change in us or in our hearts that we have no more disposition to do evil, but to do good continually. Verses 18 through 20, John's testimony in this letter ends with three striking affirmations. We know that, and summarizes some major points of the epistle. We know that whosoever is born of God sinneth not. We know that we are of God. We know that the Son of God is come and hath given us an understanding. That is interesting. Kind of like articles of faith, we believe, but we know. I like that. All right. Oh, teeny, teeny, tiny. But that's okay because, well, we'll get into that. Um... I will leave you now with a prayer from Diary of Prayer. It is December 1st. Uh, This first set of prayers is about death and judgment. And this first prayer comes from the primer. O Lord Jesus Christ, Son of the living God, set thine holy passion, cross, and death between thy judgment and our souls, both now and in our hour of death, And vouchsafe, we beseech thee, to grant unto thy living mercy and grace, to the dead pardon and rest, to thine holy church peace and concord, and to us miserable sinners life and joy everlasting, who livest and reignest with the Father and the Holy Ghost, one God, world without end. The the, the thing about reading prayers from other faiths is that some things just don't sit with you quite right. You know, like, oh, that that doesn't, that doesn't feel. Um, Anyways, the, the part about setting his cross between us and judgment. Yes, that's a part of it. But um, I think I've definitely talked about this before. It was in the Learn of Me, one of the additional readings was uh, Advocate with the Father. Let me, this changed my uh, perspective and um, understanding of what that actually means. Sorry, this book flip-flops quite a bit. All right, where are we at? Did I skip it? Yes, right here. Here it is. John S. Tanner, Christ, our Advocate and High Priest. Religious Educator 8, number 2, 2007. 
It's on rsc.byu.edu. This thing changed my perspective. This shirt is not flattering at all. Goodness gracious. Um, anyways, that's where it was. It was soups good. Anyways, um, that's all for today. That was 1 John chapter 5, and tomorrow we do 2 John and 3 John. Got it? Good. See you then after I get my hair done and fix this shirt. It's so bad. So bad.